great pleasure and honor to be here addressing this uh, gathering on the occasion of the convocation of the Computer Science and Engineering Department. You know, it turns out that I have to give three speeches today, and I've never done that in my life. So just to keep things straight, I have a piece of paper and some slides so that I don't mix up the messages. Uh, you know, this morning I was at the main convocation, and uh, I, okay, you know, before I get started, so this is, I, I, this is the title of my talk. It's not imaginary, it is imaginary tale. So I'm going to sh tell you uh, a, a story and uh, convey some messages just through pictures. Right? So that is the uh, idea. So this morning, uh, I, had, uh, I was at the main convocation, as I mentioned, and I had the occasion to, uh, and, and I bumped into Professor Bala, who I don't know whether he's in the audience, and also uh, Professor Rijureka Sen. And you know, it really, this picture tells me lots of things. So professor Bala was my professor back in uh, the late 80s and 90s, early 90s, when I was a student here. In fact, he and Professor Anshul Kumar gave me my first paying job. They hired me in their lab for the summer of 1990. I think it was paid 40 rupees a day to work in their lab. And uh, you know, I have immense amount of respect for him. And Riju Rekha is you know, a dynamic young researcher who joined the department here, I think, a year or two ago. She was my intern. In fact, she was with our uh, lab a couple of times. I was on a thesis committee. And what this tells me is that you know, academia is so unique among professions that you have people, you know, getting better, you know, becoming more and more excellent over decades and committed to their work. So I, I think all of us students and former students should give all the professors here a big hand. <laughs> now this picture also says something different just by contrast. You know, this picture, there are three happy people. I dug up some old pictures. So this is my graduation picture from July of 1993. And the thing that... Uh, <laughs> The thing that struck me is that I look pretty glum. Okay. <laughs> now, I thought maybe it was just this picture. So I, you know, those days, of course, we had film cameras, so we couldn't take as many, nearly as many pictures as people take these days. But I had a few pictures, so I looked at one other picture. I was even more glum. I mean, this is a close-up, no smile. The only redeeming feature is that none of the others were smiling either, <laughs> right? <laughs> Including one person you would recognize, Professor Rahul Garg, who is again with the Computer Science Department. I saw him this morning. I don't know if he's here. So, you know, we were a glum bunch. So I think you guys, you should be happy. This is your day. Celebrate. Be smiling. Okay? So uh, what I thought I'd do in this uh, brief, uh, you know, set of remarks is talk about some things that I learned over the years sort of beyond the classroom. Right? I didn't learn them in any classroom. I didn't learn it here or in my later degrees. It's more from experience. But, you know, these days people have much more exposure. So you might already know all of these. But let me say it anyway. The first is, you know, as engineers and in, as particularly as computer scientists, you have a very, very rigorous curriculum. You, you, you study very hard topics and you excel in those. But I think it's very important in any subject to also step back and get an intuitive understanding of what's going on, right? And I say this for many, many reasons. The first is, actually the most important is, you will forget most of what you learned very soon. I mean, take it from me, you tend to forget things very fast. But what you will remember is intuition, you'll, the underlying uh, you know, uh, uh, essential idea and the sort of elegance of the ideas. So when you, whenever you look at something new, whether it's a new theory or a new system, try to get an intuitive understanding of it. Intuition will also help you make connections. You know, if you have a, uh, an understanding of something at the intuitive level, you can take two bodies of knowledge and actually combine them and you know, produce things that would otherwise not been possible. So, uh, uh, and, and, and one last thing about intuition is that, in, and I think this is particularly relevant in computer science, I keep telling my students, computers are very good at spitting out numbers. Most of those numbers are wrong, they're garbage. So anytime you run a simulation or you run something and you plot a graph, step back and ask yourself the question, does this even make sense? Do a back of the envelope calculation. So it's quite important to be able to do that as an engineer and you know, computer scientists for the most part are engineers. The second point is communication. You know, this, I don't know how it's in IITs these days and in other universities, but you know, back in my time, I don't think we took this very seriously. We didn't really give too many talks. We didn't uh, write too many project reports. Of course, we wrote our BTEC thesis, but that was one at the end. But as I learned uh, over the years, actually I learned uh, this in a big way when I wrote my PhD thesis, right? I wrote this beautiful thing. I thought it was perfect. In fact, my advisor also was fine with it. I, I think he just quickly looked at it and it was fine. But one of my thesis committee members marked up literally every other word, not every other sentence or every other page, every other word. 
He just marked it up. And that was an eye-opening experience because that tells you how a reader of what you write looks at what you've written, right? And all the sort of ambiguity and the confusion they have when they look at it. So I think, and communication is important because you might have the best ideas in, in the world and you might be the most brilliant person in the world, but unless you can convey that to others, you really, the, the, your idea sort of that's bottled up inside you is not worth much. And the world is too busy to go and sort of dig inside and find your idea. You have to make it easy. You have to sort of spoon feed it to them, right? And so even though your engineers and your technical people, you know, are proud of that, that's very good, but also pay attention to communication, both, uh, you know, verbal communication and written communication. It's very, very important. The third, which I, I think I briefly mentioned in my remarks this morning, and maybe some of you were there, is impact. You know, uh, uh, you know, of course, back when I was in IIT, you know, the world was not nearly as connected. I mean, I, I didn't even have an email address. Uh, I, I had to borrow the email account of a PhD student and use that for my communication. But uh, today, with this connected world, sitting here in the computer science department in uh, Delhi, you should aspire to do work that, you know, people on the other side of the globe, maybe California or in South Africa, are talking about in a room. And these are people who don't know about you but they have read your paper, they have downloaded your software, they have seen a blog by you, and they're talking about it. I mean, that is something that I think each one of you can aspire to do, I mean, whether you get into research or you get into some other uh, uh, line of work, I mean, engineering, uh, you know, administration, entrepreneurship, I think there's an opportunity to do that if you set yourself to uh, so thinking along those lines. And of course, impact doesn't have to be a splash. I mean, sometimes it could be a splash, but it could also be something subtle you put out, like you put out a piece of software, and it sort of slowly propagates and you know, a lot of people find it useful. So you know, it can be a ripple that you know, pervades the world. And finally and most importantly, be yourself. And I tried to say this this morning as well, you know, despite what I might say here and what others might advise you, ultimately you have to decide for yourself. You know you yourself the best. So you have to decide for yourself what goals and what priorities make sense for you and have self-belief, right? You know, just like this cat that looks in the mirror and sees a lion. You know, believe in yourself and your abilities, and I'm sure you'll come out looking very good. So I'll, I'll end with this, a couple of things. Uh, you know, this is a picture of a gathering we had about nearly a year ago, uh, which is the Silver Jubilee reunion of my batchmates uh, here in the computer science department. And you know, some professors, I think uh, Professor Arun Kumar was there, and I think Professor Bala, I don't see him here, but he was there, and a few others were there. Uh, aside from the fact that all of us are smiling, and even I learned to smile 25 years later, uh, what is amazing is that, you know, many people, or each of them actually, each person in my batch had done something very interesting in a different line, right? You know, some went into research, some into engineering, some into finance, some into IAS and administration and so on. And so, you know, I really can't wait to see December 2042, your picture, when you have your Silver, uh, silver Jubilee reunion, you know, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, you, know what, you uh, what you would look like <laughs> and uh, what you would have done. And also, you know, some of the professors, I guess I was hoping to make a joke with Riju in the audience, but she's not here. Maybe Riju would be department chair, right? And some of the other younger faculty would be emeritus professors. So with that, I will end. Thank you.